Yeah, man, you already know what's going on, man. I'm here with one of my favorite artists, and, you know, play upon his brothers, you know what I'm saying? Nephew Texas Boy, a.k.a. Nephew Three Times. What up? What's up, my brother? What's the deal? Hey, man, we chilling, man. So, shit, man, you know, what? where you from originally? Because, you know, you be in Atlanta like you been here your whole entire life, but, you know, people just got different names and shit, so, you know. I was born in Harris County which is St. Joseph Hospital, which is Houston, Texas. Um, that's from my father's side of the family from. My mama's side of the family from Beaumont, Texas, which is area code 409, same area code as Bump B and Pimp C. That's 80 miles outside of Houston, all right? So when I was nine years old, we was living in Kelly Court Projects. My mama wanted to get off drugs. So she just said, baby, we're about to move far. And I was like, where's far? She said, where your favorite wrestler, Dusty Rhodes, at? I said, he in Macon. She said, we're going to live past there. <laughs> I said, where's that? She said, Atlanta. I said, Atlanta? She's like, yep. I said, all right, where we going? So we left, got to Atlanta. Stayed in the trailer park in Conyers first. Yeah, I stayed in the trailer park in Conyers first. And... I tried to kill a motherfucker, so they sent me, either I had to go to juvenile in Georgia, and I was going to probably get like juvenile life or some shit, but they told me I can move to the state of Texas with my grandparents, mm -hmm. and I wouldn't, so I had to go to Beaumont, Texas, so that was when I was going to the sixth grade. Right. So, <clears throat> from sixth grade, I was already trapping, I went to prison at 17 years old. I went to state prison, Larry Gis Larry State Penitentiary. Was that for the same thing that you were talking about when you said you almost had it? No, I, I had got caught with a bunch of pounds. Oh, okay. I had took a case really for my partner for real. He was younger than me, but the law just had changed. So I got charged as an adult Damn. for the amount of weed it was. So anyway, that was state jail time. I did a year and a half in Larry Gis State Jail, got out. I stayed out maybe... <laughs> 90 days and caught five years. My birthday, May 17th, May 18th, the feds got me. And I did 60 months for that. Damn. And that's when I got out. When I got out, my mama still stayed in Atlanta the whole time. So when I got out, I had met Four Trey, HB, and Zaytoven. And that's where my whole fucking music career came. Damn. So that shit crazy. That's crazy. So really, I've been in Atlanta technically my whole life. Yeah, so, yeah. And everybody be like, nephew Texas boy. I never named myself that. Wow. See, that's where everybody get it fucked up at. I never named myself that. I was in prison. I was 19 years old in the feds back in 2000, 22 years ago. Right. Okay? Everybody in that motherfucker was older gangsters, like mobsters and shit like that. And the, the new BMF, with well, the old BMF right before it about to turn to the new shit. Right? Mm -hmm. So everybody used to call me nephew. And my last three numbers of my federal number was 078. But if you caught your case hit, no matter if you got a new case or not, you still gonna have that same motherfucking Fed number. Right. Right? So my shit was Beaumont, Texas. Right? Mm -hmm. So everybody just called me Texas boy. Old heads are called me nephew. Young niggas call me Texas, Texas boy. So, you just so put them together. I just put it together. And when I start rapping in prison, I had never rapped on the street. Right. So I never rapped in Texas a day in my life. Nobody in Texas knew about my music until they heard of some nigga named Nephew Texas Boy claiming he from down here. And everybody was like, I ain't never heard of this nigga. Right. And I'm looking at them like, nigga, who the fuck is y'all to even say you heard of me? I'm a real street nigga, man. You need to find you something to do. Right. You see what I'm saying? But then it came to a point where niggas, my street reputation and music reputation met. So Beat King. I was the first nigga to bring him through Atlanta and get him popping around this motherfucker. But he found me on Twitter because I had the Sachi Life tape with TM. That was the first tape that Uzi was on. Everybody right. Right. I remember was that. on Sachi Life. And I had the biggest records on Sachi Life. Mm -hmm. Right? So B King DM me like, how your name, Nephew Texas? I still got the shit on right. Twitter. I still got the mess. He like, how the fuck your name, Nephew Texas, boy, and I don't know you. And I run <laughs> Texas. I said, nigga, you don't know everything, nigga. And he's like, and on top of that, you with all my favorite producers. 
I say, so you should learn something from that. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? That That's what intrigued our whole, that was the start of our whole friendship. Right. You see what I'm saying? But yeah, to answer your question, Nephew Texas, boy, that shit came from rapping in prison and that shit just got out because wherever I be, somebody, Texas, boy, 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 good now. I'm like, damn, I can't run from it. Yeah. And I ain't no nigga that's going to nickname myself. That's <laughs> exactly. I ain't going to, I ain't no disrespect because I don't even want to say what I would say. You know what I'm saying? Because fuck that. I ain't, I ain't about to, I ain't no hoe, I ain't about to be nicknamed myself. <laughs> Sit in the mirror, what I'ma name myself. I'ma name myself Big Gotti Roddy. I'm the like, fuck out of here, nigga. I ain't doing no shit. You know what I'm saying? My shit like, like if you in the streets, nigga, you don't come up with your street name. Nigga, nigga, right. come up with it for you. Nigga, we can ride the school bus. What's his name? Boxhead. <laughs> now that nigga been selling dope on two pointed on his boxhead. Fuck out of here, nigga. <laughs> you know what I'm <laughs> oh yeah. Speaking of pulls of the Dutch man, like, from my understanding, you down there the ambassador. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm not only the client, I'm a player president. I'm the president. Okay. <laughs> See, I, but I'm going to tell you, I'm going to keep it real. It's a lot of bosses on Ford Industrial. You got different spots on Ford It just looks like one long ass street full of bullshit. Right. Well, South Ford just cleaned that bitch up. Yeah, it ain't the same. Okay. You come down Ford Industrial now, that motherfucker looks like you got there going down P Street. Oh, damn. Yeah, they about to renovate that shit to number condos and plazas and shit. But I've been seeing that. Yeah. That's my third building in my area. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't just no fucking rapper just trying to rap, nigga. I'm building whole machines, and then I got to deal with these majors coming snatch all my pieces, and then acting like they done found something and blew it up. Exactly. But I could have sworn you was a motherfucking coalition DJ, and motherfucking watch me bring everything through that bitch. But everybody get my claim of fame for it, though. I don't get that. Can you explain that one? Oh, yeah. Okay, then. Hey. Moment of silence for the ones who can't motherfucking talk because they may be in obligations and positions that I ain't gonna never ever be in. Right. You know what I'm talking about? I'm a thousand million percent independent. Right. And right? I'm when you see, I don't shade other people or do none of that shit. I just speak on me. I'm a million percent independent. I've been out here doing this shit by myself. I don't work with any motherfucker and name a fucking music you want tonight. For sure. Like, yeah, I didn't say you work with everybody. Who I can think of anyway, especially all the artists who are like huge right now. The ones that count. Yeah, for sure. Like I, I can remember, name you, I remember having the first producers, like the first guys who you know, like the Metros, the the Sun. Metro, TMA, Southside, London on the track, Will the Fool, Fantastic, Goddamn President, Motherfucker, Chi Chi, Section Eight. All right, we just start right there. You know what I'm saying? Like what right. the fuck, nigga? That's some super saying that shit, bro. Yeah. For sure. It's all good. Found the phone, let it go. It's like we're in the truck. Oh, for nah, sure. I like my interviews like that. Keep my shit dirty. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm a dirty motherfucker. With a dirty stick. Yeah, dirty <laughs> stick, dirty <laughs> motherfucker, all that dirty. So, man, talk about some of your records, man. I know you like one of your biggest records, in my opinion. Um, you done had huge records so far, but one of my favorites was, uh, you know, the Flexing. Flexing featuring Chris Kelly. And, of course... My, the other one. You know what I'm talking about. Shout it on word. Of course. Shout it on word was huge. Yep. And then one of my personal favorites would be uh you the nigga that been trapping at you. Oh ancient. That, 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 that's my Ooh, shit. Man, that's my shit. shit. That's my shit. Oh my you god. Know what I'm See, I got a bad problem with visuals. Right. I'm kinda like, you know how you go to click on the TV and click on the old seventies music and they ain't got no videos. You right. just, they just got their songs. That's how my career kind of is. It's like, if you ain't seen me really in the streets, you ain't going to get to see the best show on earth. Because they ain't gave me a high enough price tag to sell my soul for you to see my lifestyle yet. Yeah, because you got some crazy music, bro. Like, some of the best music I've heard come out yeah, of Yeah, see, the labels do better period. going buy out everything around me than coming by the brain. Right. You know what I mean? They bought all the pieces around the brain, and the brain is still here, so they're going to have to come with a substantial amount of money to even be able to talk to the brain because I ain't none of them other forefathers in music. I deal off my beat. I'm a whole story that they don't even know how to come at yet. I'm a kinda I've been about 15 years ahead of my time, but I'm catching right on up right about now. Yeah, I'm facts, bro. Cause I remember you saying so much shit that hadn't happened at the moment, but then later on it happened. Yeah, but that's you know because I be in the other shit outside of music. 
See, they can't come wave no music check in front of me. I don't do music for that. I do music because I love it. But I got 16 other entities outside of music that don't have no type of correlation to it. Yeah. I have an antique Corvette company. I got an investment company. I got shit like that. PR firm. Just different shit. For so, sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're one of my influences, bro, when it comes to like business and everything. I'm, I'm, like watching you come from where you come from and then just kind of like, you know, doing business after, you know, outside of music. I appreciate that because I don't get a lot of accolades for what I know I put in, but I don't look behind me. You know what I'm saying? I just keep walking this way. If I look behind me, then I see a lot of folks that may have got left in the rear view mirror. Then I see a lot of things I used to do in my past that I don't like about myself. You know what I'm saying? Just so I'm in a I'm in a cleansing period in my life. All the shit that I didn't like about myself and shit like that, that's what I'm straightening out. You know what I'm saying? Because I feel I was my worst enemy. I'm my biggest problem at the end of the day. I'm not the easiest person to deal with. You see what I'm saying? So I'm trying to make myself more accessible, but less accessible. You, you can hit me, but you're going to have to hit me with this amount of money. If it ain't this much money, go back to where this shit come from in Texas. This is the Texas side of me. See, I call my shit Texas Lama. From Texas, Texas and Atlanta. But Pimp C said, You got this amount of money. God damn me. We're going to do some shit. For and sure. if you know what that money is in 20s, you know what I'm saying? That shit ain't nothing but a dub. 10 right. ski, 15, right. dub. Right. You can get me for that. Anything goddamn less than that, I'm just going to stay at you crazy at this point. Because this shit proven. This shit proven. Everything I touch go the fuck out of here, no matter how I touch it. As long as I walk in front of it like this little black cat, that shit get up out of here. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so what's been like some of the, I guess, the hardships? Of doing what you do, bro, because I know you keeping like, it real. Me keeping it real with motherfuckers, and I know I'm not gonna get any reciprocation. I know that, right? I know it when I put. I know it. I've never done nothing with expecting something out of reciprocation. I look at it as, bro, I done been in the penitentiary four times in my life. I done had millions of dollars in front of everybody facing all kind of shit, my nigga. Like, <clears throat> and I'm not doing too motherfucking bad now in life. You see what I'm saying? And so. I look at all of it, I can't even mother, I ain't got no downside. I, I've been, <clears throat> every year consistently for the last 10 years, I had a fucking record. Right. If not two or three, or four, that year. Right. See what I'm saying? So, I'm, I'm well ahead of the curve. These niggas can't come up with a record to save their motherfucking life, but they're going to give them all this money. Why? Because they want to bury them under the, under the blankets. Can't bury me under no blanket. I'm the one who put the patches on the quilt and sew them together. For sure. You can't sew me together. So how you feel about music right now? I love it. It's the most paid point in music that I've seen. They got some money with it. And I want some of it. And how I get some of it is sit here and play my role. See, I ain't been approached to do no situations. Why? Because you know I'm that far off in the trenches. I'm the I'm the jewel in the jewel case they're looking for. I just choose to show my face now. Hello to y'all. <laughs> yeah, the puppet master is here. You know what I'm saying? Like, I came out on Dirty Glove Bastard and let them know, you know what I'm saying? I'm back outside. For sure. Now, I'm over here with Mr. West Side, and we on the West Side. So sure, that's man. what makes it so much better because your hood and my hood right down the street from each other. And you know who really in the street's been making noise like a motherfucker with no machine. I am the machine. For sure. Now, I can't even lie about that, bro. You've been goddamn the machine for quite some time, bro. Like, I done watched you, like, from the first time we met in the studio to goddamn now, bro. You ain't did nothing but put people on, help people out, uh, and keep it 100. I mean, shit, I can't even. That's what my brand stands for. Plug life. See, it really came from Tupac Thug Life. He did it for thugs, but I do it for plugs. You know what I'm saying? He did it at a time period where the nineties was about thugging. All the two thousand twenty two was about plugging. Facts. Yeah. So you looking at the one and I had my I done had my company in the state of Georgia in Atlanta for ten years straight. You know what I'm saying? Like straight up by paperwork, by Secretary of State Office, so how long these niggas been climbing Atlanta is half the question I be asking because Lord knows I done trapped in every trap in the city. You know what I'm saying? Right. I don't even like to expose my business like that, but shit, if anybody know, 
Shit, you can have the name a nigga that can call me out on. Man, so I'll be doing. <laughs> Just embarrassed. Go get your big homie and go get all your little homies and tell them line all their cars up. I'm bringing just my shit outside. I ain't gonna call nobody. Just my shit. And I'm gonna show you every year I got a trophy for when I went crazy. Right. Sure. Every year I got a. I got a. Every year that I made a million dollars, I got a trophy that I can show you and put that bitch out for a fact. That bitch 175. That bitch 200. Antique stuff. Now, the value going up ain't going down. It's like stocks. I, I invest in the old shit. They want to invest in new shit. That shit ain't worth nothing. That shit fiberglass. You know what I'm saying? Right. And it ain't antique fiberglass. Antique fiberglass is worth more. You know what I'm saying? I'm in a Corvette club. I get more likes and views on my Corvette club on Facebook than I ever would get on any other platform. I'm like a Corvette god. They call me Big Vet on there. Big vet, yeah, aka big vet. So yeah, I that's dropped right. four vets in thirty days. What you mean? On four G autos. What you mean? Yeah, everything is sitting. I got this shit now. Not had. I got it now. You right as we speak. I got it now. I'm I'm a young black man. They've never seen no shit like that. And I put four G autos on my shit so it make their skin crawl. What the fuck? He the fucking got these fucking big ass rims in his fucking car back. And my shit fast as a bitch too. Yeah, oh, candy yeah. paint, gator seats, red leather sticking off the bitch. Yeah, yeah, that's what I take pride in. You know what I'm saying? And no, I don't want to compete with no niggas because that's some sissy shit. You feel me? I come from the generation in Atlanta, nigga, where you get this shit to shine or leave them fuck niggas behind. You know what I'm saying? They're like, nigga, I'm a shine on. Yeah, yeah, a real one. Y'all yeah, ain't talking about, yeah, the one. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, sure. the one from every generation of this shit. Like, we can name in legendary period, period of the city I was right there. You might just didn't know that was me, but we can rewind the footage. You're going to say, damn, that was you. Yeah. So just don't be trying to be in everybody's face like that. So, what you coming from, pretty much, like, being through both of you know the eras of Atlanta, what's the biggest difference you see from back then till now? Uh, and what aspect? Just the city or music? Music and the city, both. <clears throat> the city. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you some shit that I actually noticed. The east side was always gutter, but it was the nicer looking side. You know what I'm saying? So it would kind of trick you a little bit, and the west side was strictly trap. But since it's the pandemic and all this shit kind of closed all the traps, so it's like the city is kind of just equal looking, but the east side is where you liable to get killed and robbed. Wow. Yeah, west side, we known for trapping. It used to be known for all the gutter shit, but that shit kind of, you got to understand the generation. A lot of killers got locked up and knocked off. You know what I mean? Some old, some can't move no more. Just different scenarios, you know what I'm saying? So, right. <clears throat> the old school, end of the 80s and 90s and end of the 90s, fucking gangster shit, that shit you ain't gonna see unless you come from, I can tell you some niggas that's offsprings of it, like me, Tracy T, fucking Runaway, Richie Villa, Dick, and shit like that. Block 125 is from the original dick, you know what I'm saying? But it gets by in the new era, you know what I'm saying? Um, <clears throat> West Side Train. It's niggas who just ain't had their time, period. And every time I get an interview, I shout them out. No matter if they shout me out or not, I don't give two fucks. I do it because of the culture of Atlanta. If somebody don't speak them names in the position, it's going to go to somebody that we ain't going to want to represent this motherfucker like we want them to. You know what I'm saying? And... Is right now, I think a lot of it's a lot of team ball going on. Yeah, I see that shit, but I ain't mad at that shit. You you spend your money in your brain, that's what you're supposed to do. You know what I'm saying? And it's working for you, so shit. That means nigga need to get him some more money and push your brain harder. Or shit, sit on the sideline until it's your turn. For sure. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I'm at with it. I don't do no hating. You probably, <clears throat> uh, you probably can't get me to say no hating. Shit about nobody in their movements because everybody's movements is different. Right. You know what I'm saying? I just kind of like working without a huge ass team. I think less is more. Right. And with you like being in business and music, like what would be some advice you would give an artist who's just coming up, a younger artist, you know, like what would be some of the best advice? Oh, shit. You had some goat with that one. Oh, 
It'll be a few things with an up and coming artist. Uh, let's say, let's let me get a deeper. I gotta get a little deeper because, or do they have they made a song or not made a song? Um, let's just say somebody who done made songs, but they just can't get it off the ground. They're trying to figure oh, okay. it out. Okay. Well, you gotta spend some money into your branding. You know what I'm saying? Your marketing and your branding. You might need some bigger budget videos. You might need to pay somebody who know more about. Um, Catching the algorithm waves for you when you post your shit at the right times, this, that, and the third. Go look inside your analytics and see who your real target market is. That's my best advice that I can give. Find out who your target market is. Find out who you rapping to first. Right. Find out who you rapping to. Once you figure out who you are rapping to, who you know is listening to you, then that's where you market your music to. That's the best advice I can give to anybody. And the second best advice I can give, because I ain't about to give all, they can hit me for consultations for that. Uh, but the second advice, please make sure you know how to register your music. If you don't, well, that's not my fault. And it's not, your, you know, distro kid and shit like that, they'll give you an ISRC code. But it's different if you go study and go get your own codes. And know how to catalog your shit. You know what I'm saying? If you know how to catalog your shit correctly <clears throat> and register your shit correctly, you're gonna see all your money come straight to your mailbox. You ain't gonna have to go to the majors. Me, I'm one of the people I don't wanna hide the game from the young niggas. I wanna give it to you so I can make the majors cringe because they should have gave me a check. And then they could have silenced me. So now it's gonna have to be a big check. Right. Because really. hey, I can go to other companies and just sit and wear a different, hey, I ain't need your motherfucking NAICS code, my man. I'm saying I can speak Chinese bread with business. We know. Yeah. So, so, sure. so, so, next question, right? Mm -hmm. I met you when I was uh, DJing kind of heavy. You know, I was mm -hmm. in the clubs and everything. You were a young DJ. Yeah, I was a young was the youngest. I was, I was the youngest. So I was, uh, yeah. you know, I was out here kind of heavy, just in these clubs and everything. How important is the DJ in your opinion now? Now? Yeah. Since then? Yes, yeah, since then to now. Man, I don't even, I ain't gonna lie, I went viral a week ago for this shit, you know what I'm saying, for what I said, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, I really think when the DJs start trying to just make it all about payola, you know what I'm saying, getting some money out the artist, the artist starts saying like, God damn, like, I'm paying all this money and I ain't getting nowhere, it's not moving, you know what I'm saying, and then they took their talents to other places, they took their shit straight to Spotify, and then got a motherfucker who knew how to digital mark. Now I ain't touch every motherfucker, and you can talk your shit to that, but to who you rapping to. So that's what fuck the DJs up. It ain't a lot of people get mad at me because I'm like, you accepted money. Nigga, you know that shit motherfucking illegal, nigga, on radio. FCC regulated radio, you can't motherfucking do no form of payola while your ass going to the federal penitentiary and everybody along with the Ponzi scheme. So you can't do none of that. So if a DJ was in line with that, you shot yourself in the foot. That's just my opinion. Okay. Yeah, because I, you know, I was just thinking like, with all these different platforms and everything, uh, like, is the DJ even needed at this point? What DJs? You got different type of DJs. You got mix show DJs. You got uh, club DJs. You got strip club DJs. You got. I, I guess the, I guess the DJs that we that we that we kind of talking about the strip club like we came up in. Uh, not just us, but just like the DJs who seem to be like, you know, like you got the gatekeepers and then you got the people who like kind of like break the records and stuff. So. Okay. You can't break a record now. All you can do is play that motherfucker. They breaking it online on TikTok, Instagram, and motherfucking Spotify and Apple Music daily. You can't motherfucking break no song for them. All you can do is play that shit <clears throat> when you in the motherfucking club because what you I, I don't, okay, watch this. Name a DJ that broke a motherfucking record. I can't. I know the fuck you can't. And you was from a fucking DJ pool. That's like you telling me you broke me. How the fuck you break me? Yeah, for sure. And then and my, I broke me with this bankroll. That yeah, what even, broke even me. In my opinion, like no one DJ could break a record. It's, no, it's not possible you know because it's not possible. because you got different DJ clicks inside Atlanta that don't even fuck with each other. You feel me? And I don't even want to name drop because that ain't for me to do. They don't fuck with each other. Why? Because I can hand this boss man a check and I handed this boss man a check and it still didn't motherfucking drop the right way. So I knew that shit wasn't rock. Then I went to radio rock. Then I watched everybody goddamn get in their butt. Mm. 
Yo. So what about radio? I mean, I know you've been, you been all over the radio. I'm right? king of that one. Yeah. I'm the king of that, man. I don't need... See, they can't even... Them labels can't even work radio like me. I got these slots. When I'm in rotation, I... Bro, it ain't nothing. Seven, eight slots. Chris Brown, Future... I'm in them. Super Bowl slots. Man, them niggas got to pay. Man, what? Them niggas going to spend 150 in the streets trying to go get a moving billboard truck just to campaign to get that space. How the fuck he can get it? They be up at the rail. How the fuck he can get it? Man? Get to his position. That shit ain't even hot. See, you sound like a hater, my man. You sound like a hater right now. You know what I'm saying? You, you nigga, you worth $60 million. You were about a nigga in the ghetto with $60,000. Nigga, you should be ashamed of yourself. Nigga, y'all gonna get the wrong A&Rs, wrong nigga to do for thing. Man, they come sit in my house to listen to the music they were trying to go some and sign the producers and shit. That's some real whole shit. But I ain't never spoke on this shit until your interview. I'm trying to make your shit break every barrier and fucking... Yeah, this shit was supposed to be 15 minutes. This shit been about 30. Fuck out of here. Dirty 30. Fuck it's you, over. man. Yeah, the music industry dirty, so I'm dropping 30. <laughs> <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. Oh man, that bad, right? And don't tell me, bro. You one of the more entertaining niggas I've ever been in my life, bro. So you know what I'm saying, like. I sure. can't see how I just be being my motherfucking I know, self, bro. But she- <laughs> 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 that shit's so funny to me. Man. I was just talking, I was just talking to these men, but I'm like, man, bro, nephew, bro. One thing about nephew, bro, he gonna be himself, <laughs> and he got there go talking shit, bro. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Hey, they like they they should be glad I'm smiling. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, people don't know I just lost my mama. Like, oh, yeah, rest in peace of my plug. Like. I, should, I should be running around here hoeing niggas. But that's not my role out here. I ain't on that. I'm just trying to make me some music, drop it consistently. Pray to God I can make me some money so I can take care of my little children and keep doing it. Now, if a nigga get in the way of that and I just lost my mama, hey, man, it's up through the. So I just buy the motherfucker leave me the fuck alone. For sure. And if you didn't know Mom Plug, like Mom Plug like was the life of the party, man. Yeah, bro. man. Like that shit, that boy. shit a deep one. See, I can deal with it now. You try to interview me two months ago, I'd have broke down. I couldn't take it. You know what I'm saying? But I know what she's staying on. You know what I'm saying? Like I had to get that first little month two out of my system, but now I can literally feel when she in the room. I can like for real. Like I know how Kanye is on that Donda shit. You know what I'm saying? Like that's Liz, that's that Lily shit. You know what I'm saying? Like sure. I I get it, but I'm not Kanye, nigga. I'm nephew. Like I don't want to be nothing like that, man. Even though our business etiquette kind of the same, but I got 16 companies. I think he said on drink chance he had like nine. Like so, I'm on your ass. Give me one second. Yeah, Give me yeah. one second. You know what it takes? One record just to lock up. Mm-hmm. When that motherfucker lock, hit the cold water on that. Motherfucker. Oh, it's over. Yeah, up, I just need man. me a three year run. They can have it. Give me three years. Why don't you label motherfuckers who got a big bag? Give me three years of this shit. You feel me? Give me three years of this shit. I'll show you what this shit is, what, what, what you're supposed to do. I'll show, I show you who got the motherfucking sound on the playground. You know what I'm talking about? How the fuck you know the sound of Atlanta, motherfucker? You ain't barely even been out of motherfucking college trying to go get a new position. For sure, trying for to sure. run you, trying to run, run our coach. Now that's what I stand about. That line of culture. Like, hey, bro, don't let that nephew Texas boy shit fool you because they don't even support my music in Texas unless you know me personally. You feel me? I can't tell you I ever seen a DJ just up and play me there. So all my DJs was in Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? My music career came from Atlanta, so I give all that shit to Atlanta. So don't even talk to me about this shit. B King, that's my rap friend, and shout out to Snoop Thug. And my little cousins, Jay Reese and Beaumont, Texas, who rap and shit like that. But outside of that, man, ain't no nigga need to be talking about me. You want to buy a feature? Because I'm from the hottest market. I don't give a fuck what you talking about. Hey, this shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, for real, bro. Let's keep this shit what it is. Because, hey, let's keep it real. I went to Detroit. You was in Detroit with me. Oh, I forgot about that. Oh, yeah. Nigga, that's a whole nother hour. We ain't going do that. Nigga, I went to Detroit. Nigga, I had everything in Detroit. How the fuck everything in Detroit leave from my motherfucking pocket, though? Cause they came being nosy, buying everybody out. You know what I mean? See, I can't compete with no motherfucker worth 300 million yet. 
Give me a motherfucking just a second, motherfucker. I'm going to try to put it. Hey, because they don't want to give me no money, so I, now I got to be your competition. Okay, this 50 Cent said in this book, shit, you won't let me be your friend, motherfucker, so let me be your enemy, bitch. You know what I'm saying? So let me get some money with you, little bitch. I can be your enemy. I don't give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? That's anybody. I don't give a fuck about that part. Hey, man, let me get some money with you, my man. If I can't get no money with you, nigga, fuck you. Nigga, nigga you the same way, nigga. Why the fuck do you nigga get on these interviews and want to dress this shit up all cool and shit? Like, hell no, nah, nigga. Can I get some money with you, nigga? Oh, fuck you, nigga. You know that shit when I walk in the room. That's what I stand on. Niggas don't like that. Because, nigga, I don't give a fuck. You can be a hundred niggas, nigga. I'm going to still stand on what the fuck I just said. For sure. Church. Church. My dog, man. Nephew, man, it's always a pleasure to have you, bro. You know we got to do this shit again, bro. Anytime. Anytime. For shit, show, man. Where they can find you at? Uh, in that bitch DM. <laughs> <laughs> Look for the Texas boy. <laughs> yeah, I know. Hey, matter of fact, <laughs> matter of fact, I'm gonna show y'all serious this shit is. I'm giving y'all some words of advice. When you get home, check your bitch phone and just go through her DM and just type in N E P. Anything pop up after that, bitch? How you go <laughs> real? <laughs> Oh, you can find me on Instagram. Nephew Texas boy with the blue check beside. <laughs> All right, bro. <laughs> 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 <laughs>